My name's Oliver Gibson from Northbridge Digital. Uh, we provide Drupal and CVCRM services to not-for-profit organisations uh, in the UK, in Europe, and occasionally in the rest of the world. Um, I've been working with CVCRM for nine years, I think, which is a reasonable long time. And I've managed uh, the migration and creation on, of, of uh, around 70 CVCRM systems. So I would say I know it quite well. Um, this uh, session is intended for people who don't know CBCRM at all. It's for, literally for people who are absolute beginners. And we ran this last year as an experiment because we went, we, you know, you kind of assume, I suppose, that at a conference for a piece of software that the people who are coming will probably know that software quite well or they might have already spent some time looking at it. But that's not necessarily the case. So we thought it'd be nice to have uh, a session like this at the beginning uh, just to get people uh, like to acclimatize them to the software. Um, throughout the rest of this day, so there's another three sessions in this day um, and another three session slots and in each one of those slots there's another session which is intended for people who are totally new users. So the idea is if you come into this that you can also then go on to these other slots as well and hopefully at the end of the first day you will then have a quite a good working knowledge of CBCRM and what's possible. Shall I turn this off? Yeah. Is it annoying? <laughs> it's annoying. It's an, I can only see it on the periphery and it's annoying me. That's Don't worry, I do, I do enough presentation for myself. This sort of thing happens a whole lot of time. So. Well, I'm the conference organiser. You'd think I'd get this right, wouldn't you? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I'll carry on. Okay. So, um, during the session, we've got... about 50 minutes now. Um, we're going to, I'm going to talk about what CVCRM actually is, what the, what the software is, where it came from, what kind of software it is, what, what, its, uh, what its characteristics. Uh, I'm going to talk about how CVCRM works as a community, um, how you get started with CVCRM, where you can get online support. Then we'll look at a system as well. Uh, yeah, we'll yeah, we'll definitely be looking. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then we're going to split up in the last 20 minutes and we're going to do some group work. So we'll probably split up into two groups and I've got some simple exercises just to get you going with the software. The idea is to impart as much information in the next 50 minutes as possible. Okay. Um, have we got time for this now? I don't know. We could, it's, would anyone want, to say, anyone want to say what their interest is in CBCRM? Well, it's fairly enough. I'm going to mention specific, which is a charity based in Devon for people with asthma and autism. And we're looking at the website, which is a combination of Joomla and CBCRM. And let's say we've got a CRM installed, done a little bit with it, but let's say still having still heads around it so that when it does turn up and it will be turning up very soonish, we can not hang around too long and get down the business quickly. Okay. Okay. Would anybody else like to say what situation they're in and uh, we Robbie? just we, we um, took on City Theorem last year, transferring from a very basic database of contacts. Um, so we've got that, we've sort of started with that, we're very new, but then now we're also building a website, on the um, Drupal website. Okay, to go so, with it. Yeah, and then we're going to move on to online bookings and things, which we've never had. So I, I wasn't in on when we got the CBC around, that's why I want to... Oh, hear. right, okay, makes sense. Caroline, do you want to say anything? Uh, yeah, we haven't got our CBC around system yet, but we're getting it very soon. Um, it's going to be sort of more for just internal within the office use rather than too many users, but just a sort of database of our donors and uh, network contacts and things like that, and keeping track of communication. And stuff like that. Okay, okay, brilliant. Uh, would anybody else like to say anything? Or have they got anything specific that you want from this? I guess. 
May I say, we have Van here, who could probably do someone that knows more in terms of the Joomla side rather than the Drupal side, but I say, I mean, Okay. Do, do you have any knowledge of Joomla or no people? Uh, me, personally, we work with Drupal. Yeah. I would say I know WordPress reasonably well. I would say I know Joomla less. Okay, fair enough. But so be it. <laughs> okay. Um, if everyone's okay, I'll move on. Yeah? Okay. Okay. So, I'm going to talk now about what CVCRM is. Okay. So, CVCRM has been around for 11 years. Uh, and... As Josh said before in the opening speech, it's used by nearly 10,000 organizations across the world. So there's a huge breadth of organization there. So some might be using it purely for funding purposes and to track their donations. Some might be using it to track project work and work they do with clients. Uh, some might be using it more for marketing purposes and using it for mail shots. And some organizations um, will use it uh, for, a multi, you know, for all those things and, and more. They might even use it to manage small grants. And so it's a really flexible system. And the idea is it's not the kind of system that you purchase, it seems appropriate, and then five years later you come back and you think, oh, this, that old thing, we, we don't, that's not suitable anymore. You know, we should now, we need to spend that money again, we need to do the whole thing again. The idea with CVCRM is that it can flex and change over time and move with the organization. And you can stick with it over a long period of time. So some organizations have now been using it for those 11 years, which is a, that's, any system to run it has an ongoing cost because you've got to train people, you might have to have someone internally who makes changes or use someone like myself, like a consultant to make those changes. But those, keep it, be able to keep that going and keep it going and keep it steady and reliable, far out ways any sort of, uh, any move to a new system, you know, the, the disadvantage of moving to a new system, which has huge upheaval and massive cost. Um, CVCRM is open source, which means it's free to use under license. You can't then sell it on. And it's an online system only. Um, and as has been mentioned, it works with um, three the, th the three main con content management systems, open source content management systems. So it works with Drupal, Joomla, or WordPress. It, it used to work in a standalone capacity, but that's no longer the case. It, it has to sit on one of those other three systems. Um, as is apparent, it's voluntary sector and not-for-profit sector specific. But sometimes there might be a statutory organization that's using it as well. You know, it's, so even though it's or, you know, it's, even though it's aimed particularly at that sector, that doesn't mean that other sectors aren't dipping in and using that as well. And quite often when we're working with someone, they will say things like, where do I put the diary? Where do the diary items come up? Or where can I put the uh, room booking element? And that's, those things aren't by default in CVCRM out of the box. CVCRM is a contact, client, constituent, customer relationship management software. It's about the contacts. It's about individuals and organizations, sometimes households, and the relationships between those contacts. And then you then hold extra information about those contacts. So they, this person gave us some money, this person has been on an event, this person is a member. So it's contact-centric. Um, we'll, when we, we'll look at a live system, but um, a good way to think about CVCRM is that out of the box, when you install it, you have the core software, which is all about those, those contacts, and you can extend that with custom sets of information. And then you can turn on the built-in components. So the built-in components would be uh, events, mailings, membership, uh, grants, contributions. Contributions is payments. But they're not essential. You do, they're optional. You, you decide whether, which elements you, or components you're going to turn on. That's what comes out of the box. 
but then you can then extend that further. So, it, for example, in the UK, you could choose to use an extension like the gift aid extension or a direct debit extension, something that takes the, the, the essential software and then adds something to that. Uh, those extensions aren't usually written by CBCRM, they're usually written by external organisations. For example, like CompuCorp, would, uh, who are sitting here, they would write some of those extensions. Can I ask the extensions, is that modules and, and plugins? So, so, in Dru right, so, so terminology wise, uh, in Drupal they're called modules, uh, in CBCRM they're called extensions. Uh, and that's, once you've got that system in place, you know, some people don't do that. Some people will just have a much more basic system. You don't necessarily have to use those extensions. Um, once you've got that in place, then that is great for the management of your internal information. But you can then push the system further, and then you can have website integration. So you can have people signing up for online forms to donate you money. They could become a member. They can, you can push in complex information through a form system straight into the CRM. Okay, so that's CVCRM, the software, and how that works with the organization. CVCRM, I would say, is also this. You know, it's, it's people like me, the developer, it's also the users. Uh, and I guess within that as well, we also have the core team. So the, the CVCRM core team is quite small, um, and a lot of those people are here over the next two days as well. Again, we've also got conferences and meetups. Has, that, has anyone been to a local meetup? No. So, in in, there's, in London, I think there's a monthly meetup for people who are interested you know in CBCRM. You, you talk about local meetups. Do you know there's any in the south of England? I think there's one in Bristol. Bristol. Okay, so that's one. That's there's one. Yeah. So yeah. What happens in Bristol, but doesn't happen here? Sorry, say that again, please. Things happen in Bristol, but don't happen here. Uh, I think it's the Bristol one is probably less frequent and probably smaller. Okay. Yeah, and less, and the Bristol one would be because there's a CBCRM uh, a partner company in Bristol, so they'll organise that. Whereas the London one will be uh, an, uh, there's a, a, a bigger community of organisations working with CBCRM, so they'll be involved in that meeting. Fair um, so there's, thing, there's physical things that happen, and then there's also the online side as well, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a bit more detail shortly. Just going to do a time check. Okay. I would say I'm behind time. I'm going to speed up a bit. <laughs> okay. So, I want to talk about how to get started. So, I think there's probably three main ways that you can get started with CVCRM. The first way is that you work for an organization who has the technical skill in-house. There's an IT department, or they hire someone in to, to, do, to set up a system. That tends to, is going to be, tend to be more medium and larger organizations who would do that, because they've got that kind of capacity. And they want that capacity in-house, because it's, in the long run, that's, they would see that's cheaper, or they're going to need a lot of changes over a long period of time. Uh, the second way is that you learn how to do it yourself. I guess there's risks in that. <laughs> it might not go very well. Uh, staff might not like it. Um, you might do something wrong. And the payment side doesn't, you try to take payments online, they don't work. Or, you know, there's potential pitfalls to doing that. But, so you should have a good degree of technical -ish knowledge, I suppose, before you went ahead and, and just started to do that. But it's possible, That's, lots of people do do that. Especially organizations that are volunteer-led where they haven't really got any budget for this kind of thing. Someone who's technically minded will just go on and install the system and, and start using it. Um, the third way is that you contact a provider, so which is, this, this is my company, that's what we do, um, and uh, this, that's on this website. So you can find there's, a, there's a different types of provider depending on what type of service they provide, where they're located. Are they providing hosting services, training, migration, general um, configuration, installation. Has anyone got any questions about getting started? Sorry, I was about to just, just move straight on. Has anyone got any questions about that? Or has anyone 
found that difficult. It, it can, it just, just deciding you might want to use the software doesn't mean you're getting going, does it? It can take a while, I think. OK. Um, and then we have the actual support that's available online. So this could be before you started using it, or um, before you chose to use a particular section. So say you were already using CVCRM and you thought, oh, I quite like, I think we might use the events module. I think that might be quite useful. Component, sorry, I'm doing it myself now. Yeah. <laughs> if you go to use the event component, you might think, well, I'm going to find out about that. So this is where you would go. It's book.cvcrm.org. And that will tell you practically what an event is, what's a participant, how do people book, how do you take that online. Uh, there'll be screenshots, practical examples. Um, the book is kept up to date with the software. So there's volunteers who rewrite the book often uh, in a planned manner. So we're, we're, after the conference, there's quite a number of CBCRM people who we're, we're all going to Derbyshire uh, for a week. And one of the things we'll be doing is we'll be updating the book. Uh, the book is linked when you're on a CVCRM system. If you go to the bottom of the page and to the very bottom right, it says there's a link and it says online documentation, and that takes you to the book. Um, you can also use this site. We, these, we used to use a CVCRM forum, but now it's been replaced with the Stack Exchange site. This is the question and answer site. You can ask any question, it doesn't matter if you think it seems basic or anything, it doesn't matter. It's, do you, there's some people. Some people love answering questions, really love it. They've done like thousands and thousands. I don't know, you know. <laughs> and then there's the core team as well. They, they answer these questions as well. Um, there's some very, very specific things. So for example, uh, CompuCorp did a room booking module, a extension a couple of years ago. And uh, I, I helped write that original specification with Jamie, and we would have put, there'd be a, there'll be a page, or a number of pages on the wiki about the room booking ex extension. If you're more of a, I was going to say face-to-face, -face, not face-to-face, -face. if you're more of a, I, I want to speak to someone, you can use this IRC chat. Has anyone ever used IRC? KT? <laughs> uh, it stands for Internet Relay Chat. You just open a piece of software, Put this in, the hashtag CVCRM, IRC, and then up, up, there's, there's people on there all the time talking. The core team especially use that. For, they Because they're based around the world, they use that to communicate between themselves. OK. Uh, has anyone got any questions about this? I would say it's quite well supported online. OK. Right. I'm now going to bring up a CVCRM site, and I'm just going just to talk you through the interface and do some uh, fundamentals. And OK, this will load up in a second. Uh, because I wasn't, you can never be sure there's going to be internet. It's a local install on my laptop. So it should go OK. It should be right. OK. Ignore those, doesn't matter. OK, can, can everyone see that? OK, do you want to make the screen a bit bigger? Oh, is it all right? It's fine? OK. So all we're going to do is just look at the back end. We're not looking at anything to do with the front end, and um, as in you know, the online, any online pages, anything like that. We're just looking at what the staff would see. OK, so first thing is, to note is we have a menu across the top with search, how to search, how to do basic contacts, and then these are the components. Contributions, events, mailings, and memberships. So when it says contributions, it means payments. Um, those would be considered optional. So a well-configured system, to my mind, would be that when someone logs in, if I'm not a member of staff who has anything to do with events or mailings, 
I shouldn't see those. They, should, they should be, shouldn't be there. So you only would see the things that are important to you. So if, for example, I click on the contacts menu, and here it says new activity. If I, all I'm doing, and activities might be things like meetings or phone calls, say, as an example. If all I'm doing is, as a staff member, is updating people's details and putting in activities, then I shouldn't see any of these ones at all. It should be, the system should be as simple as possible. Hi, Steve. Right. <laughs> we shouldn't be too long. Yeah, this is good. This is good. Yeah. yeah, no, it's all right. Okay, so this is the home page, CBCRM home. On here, I've got this set up, so it's already bringing up some information. So what have we, what have we been getting from events? Uh, there's some donor information and what, what's our membership income? Can I ask you something? Of course you can. About the, when you were saying that a well set up system would only show the things that you could do. Yeah. Um, and that has to do, is that the roles, the profiles? What you, uh, yeah, roles and permissions. Roles yeah. and permissions. Yeah. yeah. These are reports. So all, all, anything that appears on the front like this is a report. And these are called dashlets. It's in the book. So I think you read it, and so I think to see it and have somebody say, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. It's not immediately <laughs> obvious. So that's where those, it's not immediately obvious in a CVCRM system where those have come from. Okay. I will, I've got a specific person to look up. Okay. This is called a quick lookup. If you, if you know, so you, you, you know who you're looking for, you can use their, their first name, last name, email, or organization name. Put that in, and it brings up um, the matching contacts. I don't think that probably doesn't work too well if you have, if you had, say, 600,000 contacts in your database, and you put Smith, that's probably not going to work too well at all. Because you're only getting, you can change how many show, but even then, it's not going to work, is it? So it's, it's that, this, how well this works is kind of dependent upon your data, I think. But I was looking for someone specific. Uh, I'm looking for this person, Billy Cooper. Um, all this data is safe. When you install CBCRM, it says, would you like to install the sample data? And that's what I've done. So it's loaded up some sample data that's just nonsense. Um, OK. So this contact screen, I'm going to come back to this. I'm just going to do some more searching first. That's all right. I'm, I'll just be five minutes. <laughs> is that all right? <laughs> This is, in the back, this, this is everyone who's going to help Anne Katie with the exercises. These are other CBCRM consultants who've offered to help. As well. okay. So instead of using the quick lookup, I've been to the search menu, and the first item I've chosen is find contacts. Again, this is a basic search, except what will happen is when I click search, this is going to show me a formal list of results with things I can do with those contacts as opposed to just showing a really brief list up at the top. So I could search again by name or email. I could also search by contact type. So these are those three main types that we talked about. But we also have, under individual, we've got three other types. When you're on your system, if you install it empty, that isn't there. You just, got, you just start with the three. These have been added because they're sample data. And these are called uh, contact subtypes. So the reason you might use these, there's two reasons I think why you would use contact subtypes, is um, one, it provides a really clear definition. As to, as to, you know, we work with uh, volunteers and we work with clients. And I want to, and someone, could be, you, someone can be more than one of these. You could be a volunteer and a client, for example. But also, when we put in custom fields, so I want to know uh, when this person can volunteer, have they got a DBS check, uh, when did they start volunteering. 
those might be custom fields about volunteers. But you wouldn't want them necessarily to show on every individual, because that's messy and confusing. So you'd set it up so that those custom fields about volunteers only show on that subtype. And that's the way we'd, we'd, that's the way we'd subdivide the information. And we've also got groups. This should be quite self-explanatory, I think. I'm a contact. I'm Oliver Gibson. And we're going to put Oliver in the newsletter group. Or Oliver's filled in an online form asking to go into the newsletter group. So when we look at a contact, we'll see that people can be in groups. They can be grouped. So I could say at this point, show me all the newsletter subscribers. So all these people will be in that group. So if you look at this person, Bernadette. Bernadette, we're on Bernadette's contact. She's in a group. She's in one group. The group she's in is newsletter subscriber. Now, when I'm doing proper training with people, I would say on fine contacts and advanced search, we spend about 25 minutes. Sounds like a long time, maybe half an hour. But the reason for that is that the next search, advanced search, is the opposite of the basic fine contacts one. This actually lets you search by everything. It connects all the data in the system together. So in here, you could say, I'm looking for someone who's uh, a new member who lives within 15 miles of Glasgow city centre and is over 35 years old. Everything is connected. So one thing I would say is, when you do start using your CBCRM system, this is, the, this is where I normally say, go away and spend 20 minutes playing around with this. You can't break anything, but this is where, you, this is where a lot of people will actually get their information from, what's, what's happening with our data. Hiya. Uh, yeah. So is this what, in other terminology, you would call a query? I mean, is this, is this yeah. What, so this is, your search would be a query. This is how yeah. you run a query. Yeah, so if, if I say, for example, here, uh, oops. If I want to sh show everyone within five miles of that location. This this won't work, by the way, but because it's not, yeah. But uh, I don't think it will. No. Oh, this is me. It's my rubbish. This is me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, it tells you what it's done. So the more and more things you add to it the more that builds up. Yeah. You can. So, that's, yeah, this, that leads on quite nicely, actually. That's good, yeah. Okay. So once, so once you've done your searching, you've, you've applied your filters, and you've, you've got down to what you wanted, then we can do things with this, we can do things with these contacts. We, we could obviously just click on, someone's name and just go and look at their record. But we could also select individual ones or select them all. And there's a list of actions in there. So for example, I want to produce some mailing labels for these people. And it'll create a PDF of the labels. Or I want to show them on a map. Or I want to put them in a group. So you could group them. So you could say, uh, you could have a group called everyone within five miles of this location. And you could have that group name. But that changes very quickly. Because as soon as someone else gets added, they're not in that group. Because the group was fixed. You save the group, but actually what you saved doesn't, you know, it has changed. So that's when you'd use this one called a smart group. A smart group, people drop in and out of the group automatically. If someone meets this original search, they go in the group. If I meet, change address, I go, I go out of the group. If, I'm, if I meet the criteria, I go into the group automatically. And that's a saved query. Uh, I think I'll hold me a second. Just checking I've not missed anything. OK. 
again, when we're doing training, we spend quite a lot of time on here because this is where the administration happens. This is where we can export. We, this is where we can see, visualize things. This is where we can create, con we can send text messages to all those people. This is where, this is where, the, admin, this is where the admin really comes into play. Um, what I'll do now is I'm going to, am I out of time? Probably out of time, I don't know. If you give it two more minutes, do you think that'd be okay? Be right, wouldn't it? <laughs> okay. Okay. So this is the contact. And the reason I chose this contact is because the, they've been quite busy. So on this summary screen, we've got some basic information, address, we could have phone, email, we've got agenda, and what's going on. Um, they've made one payment, they've got seven activities, they've been on one event, they've got four relationships. I won't talk about events and membership because there's other sessions later in the day which for new users which talk specifically about those. So if you're interested in those areas, you should go along to those sessions. But I will show you these. So we've already, we've already looked at groups. I could put someone into a group. We also have relationships. So a relationship connects two contacts together. So that could be uh, employer-employee, it could be um, volunteer, it could be um, like a sibling relationship, it could be any kind of relationship you want it to be. So this person is a parent of two people, they're a head of household and they're, a, they're someone's spouse. If we went to look at one of these contacts, we'll see the same thing reflected back, but the, the other side of the relationship. So employer-employee, you would see the organisation and you could come back that way. This person has also had some activities. So <coughs> some of these are automated. So for example, if I fill in an online form, that might be like a membership sign up or I've made some kind of donation payment. There's also manual ones. For example, like a phone call. So I could say, I've, I, the staff member, have had a meeting or a phone call with this person. You're logged in as you. It recognizes you. I think that's everything I wanted to mention. I, w I went quite quickly at the end there. Sorry, for that. Sorry about that. Has anyone got any questions? No? Okay, All right. In that case, I'm going to leave this live thing and go back. Oh, I hope it's not going to do that thing again. Okay. <coughs> Okay, right. What we've got a little bit of time. What I thought would be good is maybe if we just split into how many people we've got? Uh, three, four, five, six. Into three groups, and um, we've got some exercises just just to get you familiar with uh, with you know with the system. And you could also ask the highly knowledgeable consultant who'll be helping you. <laughs> About your, about your particular system as well. Okay? Uh, so we at the back, we have Aidan, Andy, and Steve. And Katie, do you want to do it as well? Do we, with, Katie's here. So should we split into three groups now, quickly? And um, I guess we're going to have to get on the wireless as well. Um, okay. Uh, so if you have one group at the front here, one at the back, and one on the, the left there, on the left hand side. 